welcome to the Great Shrimp Show. Today we're going to get up close and personal with the new vampire shrimp that have been living in my 30 gallon tank. Well, at least as close as they'll let me because they're shy and mysterious and quirky and who knows what they've been up to for the last month. Anyway, let's get this sideshow started. So what does a vampire shrimp actually do, and exactly what are their quirks and traits? Are they allergic to UV light? Can they see in total darkness? Do they inject venom into their prey via fangs and then suck out their insides once everything is liquefied? To answer all these questions and more, I have spent the better part of the last month observing them as they become acquainted to my 30 gallon tank and the results have been very interesting to say the least. Let's jump right into the meat and potatoes, or rather, the biofilm and detritus. So vampire shrimp are part of the same family tree containing bamboo shrimp. I've talked about this before, but it's worth mentioning again because they don't look like they're related at first glance. To answer our first question about what vampire shrimp eat, we can observe them, but we can also look to their cousins as they share a lot of physical similarities, even if they do look a quite bit different. Firstly, their chelipeds or grasping claws are actually highly advanced, and they have evolved to be their main distinctive feature. On a vampire shrimp, these are delicate claws, not hardened fangs. These claws taper into a milky white color and it gives them the appearance of the fang or stinger when closed. But just like the bamboo shrimp, these vampire shrimp chelipeds actually fan out. There are two parts to each of the four claws and once these two halves open, a row of fine hairs can extend creating an interlocking screen. Each claw part forms a rough half circle, so a total unfurled fan will form an almost full oval. Here we have the first myth debunked, the question answered, as the fangs of these vampire shrimp turn out to be nothing more than soft little fans. They use these fans to trap biomatter that floats around in the water, but they are still indiscriminate eaters. Whatever their fans catch must also probably be small enough to fit in their mouths. So no matter what the vampire shrimp catches on their fans, everything ends up going towards the mouth. Here, the mouth, digestive system, and waste path are all a little bit larger than in other dwarf shrimp, so they manage to get more total biomass to digest. It doesn't matter what's on the menu. If a piece of plant is floating by, that gets eaten. If it's a grain of sand, that's light enough to be pushed around in the water column, that gets eaten. If it's a piece of shrimp or shrimp carapace, that also gets eaten. Remember, these shrimp need calcium to complete their molting cycles, so they are likely to eat small copepods too if they were unfortunate enough to get stuck in the fans. Pound for pound, copepods and other small organisms offer good nutrients. You're just unlikely to ever see a pound of these tiny, tiny, near microscopic crustaceans in your life. My bamboo shrimp and my vampire shrimp both paw at the ground, tossing up debris. This pawing action turns the debris into dust clouds which the shrimp can then flap their fans in, catching detritus or the remnants of the food pellets that my other shrimp eat. At first I thought the vampire shrimp were somewhat unique, but here I later spotted them doing very nearly everything that I have ever observed the bamboo shrimp doing. Perhaps they're a little bit shy though, so they don't use every opportunity to venture out into the open, but ultimately they are no more dignified than any other shrimp in my tanks. Actually, I take that back. The ghost shrimp are not dignified. They are gangly fools. So nearly every other shrimp is more dignified than they are. So vampire shrimp are basically fan shrimp. It makes sense as some of their most common names include blue fan shrimp, giant fan shrimp, giant filter shrimp, and gabon shrimp. The two fan shrimp species that I have eat the same stuff and that means that the vampire shrimp don't have vampire fangs. But what about their other features? Well, 
Their paralopods, or walking legs, are in fact slightly different. They start out close to the fans as large armored legs. The males have even larger versions of this feature. They can use these legs to crawl around, and their large armored composition means that these vampire shrimp are more robust than they initially look. The paralopods taper off from the front, growing more thin until they look about the same as those of other shrimp. A number of possibilities exist for this evolutionary trait, but there are two more likely contenders. First, the large legs mean that they can more easily grasp and hold on to their feeding surfaces. This seems very probable, because they call the fast-moving currents of African rivers their home. A second option is as a defense. Besides their carapace, these shrimp have no other defensive mechanisms, so a good shield would keep them safer when it came to predators. It's important because when these shrimp are caught out in the open, they don't have the sort of camouflage that keeps their cousins safe. Now that we mention it, let's start with the overall look of vampire shrimp and whether or not their color means that they are allergic to UV light. Addressing the stark color differences of vampire shrimp compared to other river shrimp, we see that they are pretty unique, and their white coloration does cause us to ask some questions. Let's rattle off some of these features and facts to hopefully put some of these questions to rest. First, they aren't albino shrimp. Their white color is not from the lack of pigment, but rather white is their pigment. As they grow older, their color deepens and they can get much darker, including growing into deeper purples and blues. Myth number two, are they allergic to UV light? Has been busted. They are very much not allergic to UV light. It has been postulated that their light coloration means they favor darker spots where their color wouldn't be a disadvantage to predators. This is a definite possibility, but it's hard to pin something that's eye behavior on visual evolutionary traits. It's more likely that certain feeding and resting habits made particular vampire shrimp more successful at survival, not specifically because they were aware of their color or its disadvantage. Still, they do seem a bit shy when compared to other freshwater shrimp. Sticking with the theme of lurking in the dark, we ask the question, can vampire shrimp see in the dark? The quick answer is no. While they have an additional photoreceptor that humans do not possess, the very idea of a photoreceptor debunks this rumor somewhat. In order to see, there must be light. UV, infrared, full spectrum, or many other wavelengths. As available light sources go down to zero, all photoreceptors will eventually go dark. And fortunately, what you and I perceive as dark is pretty bright to most animals, and for shrimp, it's an entirely different story. They have some of the most complex and efficient eye structures, and that added photoreceptor means that in dim light they should be at an advantage. Additionally, their other senses, including smell, are heightened. Studies have been done with blinded shrimp, and they have been able to find their food, albeit after only nearly stumbling into it. Because they are suited for darkness, it is important to offer some hiding spots and darkness in your tank, regardless of which species of shrimp you are keeping. Again, studies have shown that when given the choice between darker spots and brightest lights, shrimp aren't afraid to dance between them, but they will eventually congregate and persist for longer periods in the darker parts of your fish tanks. Vampire shrimp are special in other not-so-usual ways, though. It is not well known, but they are one of the hardest species of freshwater shrimp to breed in captivity, because they have a complex egg-to-larva to juvenile path that includes bits of thyme in brackish water. The adults do not handle the brackish water, so their development in the wild takes them out to the ends of a river where it meets the ocean and then back into the freshwater areas upstream as they grow older. Adding difficulty to this process is the fact that the larvae go through multiple stages before getting to the juvenile stage. If you've seen a juvenile fan shrimp, you'll appreciate just how cute they are. They are some of the tiniest and cutest freshwater invertebrates that you can imagine. The fan shrimp and vampire shrimp process of growth is more than just impressive on its surface. 
When you stop to examine how far juvenile and larval shrimp have to travel to get back to the places where they breed and lay eggs as adults, you can begin to appreciate how resilient and special these invertebrates actually are. This migration is not on the order of, say, the Pacific salmon or migratory whales, but considering their size and the hardships, in comparison, is equally impressive. It's actually amazing that an ecological shift or bump didn't wipe these creatures out sometime in our past. But here, again, there may be a clue to why that is. Adding to the resilience of vampire shrimp is their longevity. In the adult stage, they have some of the longest life among freshwater shrimp and invertebrates of their size. Usually the smaller you are in the world of shrimp, the shorter your lifespan is. Vampire shrimp and other fan shrimp can live up to five years in ideal conditions. That longevity could have helped their species weather seasonal droughts and changes to their ecosystem. It also makes them ideal additions to a large enough aquarium because they'll live longer than your other shrimp. All that being said though, there are some important things to remember when making your tank ready for fan shrimp and vampire shrimp. First, you need a good amount of water flow. These shrimp get their food directly out of the flowing current. Second, they really like hiding spots, including holes in woods and rocks, and behind or in between filter components. Thirdly, you might need a larger tank just to keep the water moving around and not destroy your plants, while also giving enough room for the fan shrimp to perch and feed. 30 gallons is about the minimum that I would recommend, and sadly I've seen them housed in 3 gallon tanks. Hopefully that's just until they find a better home. Fourth, they might prefer darkness every once in a while, especially between moldings. So make sure to provide them more shade than for other invertebrates. My ghost shrimp love it near the open window, but that tank would I think be too stressful for any variety of fan shrimp. So there you have it, vampire shrimp. Not so scary after all, and just about the only thing difficult about them is the breeding process. I hope that this little guide has helped you become more accustomed to this beautiful variety of fan shrimp, and hopefully you'll be encouraged to keep some of these beautiful and peaceful shrimp in your aquarium if you're equipped for them, of course. Anyway, thank you for tagging along, and I'll be sure to see you next time on The Great Shrimp Shoal. Good night.